Guys, I've had a crazy idea. I've decided to invite two lucky followers here to Budapest, Hungary to meet them in person and introduce them to the polyglot system, which is my personal method of learning English that I use in my exclusive English club to help students all around the world start speaking English confidently and fluently in just a few weeks. So why exactly am I doing this? Well, first of all, I love challenging myself. I love exploring my limits and testing my boundaries. And second of all, I know it's no secret that I can help people improve their English in one to two months, but I wondered if it was possible to do this in three to six days. So over the course of the next week, we're gonna find out. I put out a questionnaire on my Instagram stories looking for followers who could come to Budapest for three to six days to visit. A lot of people filled out the form, but the lucky winners were Angelica from Brazil and Attila from Hungary. Angelica, can you tell me where you're from, why you're in Budapest, and maybe two interesting facts about yourself? Okay, I'm Brazilian. I'm traveling and working at the same time, and now it's my first day in Budapest. I'm traveling for eight months. I eight think months. it's interesting. <laughs> Fact. And I like cinema, I like to learn new language. What do you do for work? I'm a Portuguese teacher and linguist. I research how the language work, how this is processed in our brain. So I'm from Hungary. Uh, at the moment I don't live in Budapest, uh, but before I lived uh, uh, for 12 years here. I love to travel. So I have been in many beautiful countries. So one of my favorites is Mexico, and I have been in the United States. I have many friends there. One of my favorite things, I like organized parties. You like organizing parties? Yes, my next party will be a Hungarian party, so you are invited. <laughs> a Hungarian party? Yes. So what's going to happen at this Hungarian so party? In, uh, so it will be next week. So we have a national holiday. Uh, 15th, of Mar 15th of March and uh, for this reason I talked uh, I can show everyone the Hungarian history <laughs> so are just Hungarians gonna be there or other people from other countries I would like to invite her from other countries yeah my American friends will be there Okay, so your American friends. Now, we'll talk about that later because that's important, right? Practicing English with native speakers. Attila, you have American friends. Yes. Do you uh, talk with them a lot? Yes, uh, I, I can meet with them almost every day. Yeah. <laughs> that's great practice. Yeah, that's great really practice. good practice. Uh, and we have a, a free uh, English class every week on Thursday, so I, I'm always there. So I can I can help them to teach English. <laughs> this is very amazing, amazing. Yes. Okay, and Attila, can you tell me why do you want to improve your English? Uh, I feel that uh, sometimes my pronunciation not not really very good. So I really want to improve my English skills, uh, English grammar, for example, yeah. and. Uh, and sometimes I feel that my vocabulary is uh, very poor yeah. and uh, of course uh, because I love to travel I really uh, want to understand uh, everything uh, with the people who I can meet with or I can meet with them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so talking to people from different cultures, traveling. Yes, I'm Wonderful. Really interested in many uh, cultures uh, from other countries, yes. Yeah. Um, to keep traveling and to could connect with people with more like a um, deep way in the sense like uh, have a more complex um, dialogues and this kind of thing and to travel in some parts, some place that I don't speak the language. I found out that Angelica comes from Brazil and she's been traveling in Europe for nine months, which is really a long time. And Attila has acted as an extra in many American movies filmed here in Hungary, which I found really cool. This kind of reality style thing is not new to you. Yes, I was only extras in these movies, but I really loved her. Yeah. So when I lived here in Budapest, so I, I have been in many, especially in American movies. They have no idea what's going to happen, but they have something in common. They both want to improve their English. I was thinking, oh, okay, yeah, let's see what happened. And yeah. then when I have a good answer, so I was, 
I feel lucky to have a, <laughs> to enjoy this experience. So I was really happy about me, so I can uh, meet with you. So <laughs> this is a um, um, very in, um, interesting thing for me. <laughs> Today, our first step was to diagnose their level of English and spot their weak points. 95% of tutors and English schools completely miss this step. I want you to imagine you're going to the doctor's office. Why do you go to the doctor's office? Because you have symptoms. Yeah. You have something that's, that feels wrong and you need somebody to give you a diagnosis. Pretend I'm the doctor now, okay? Uh -oh. I'm the English doctor and you're coming to me. I'm going to ask you some questions and I want to know what you're feeling why you think you might be feeling it and based on that information i can give you a diagnosis of your problem because you need to diagnose the, the problem the english language I exactly yeah okay, exactly okay. so <laughs> I, I mean, i'm not a doctor okay. I, i'm an english doctor okay i talk that, uh, but uh, I, I, I want to be sure <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Yes. and once we have the diagnosis we can come up with the solution because a lot of teachers just go right into teaching they don't focus on the source yeah. of the problem uh, I'm going to ask you first Angelica what first of all self-diagnose what do you think for you is most difficult like what do you feel do you feel nervous when you learn do you feel stuck I'm stuck is, is when when we couldn't um, we feel that we are not uh, progress not exactly progress. so when we feel stuck we feel like we're not making any progress we just hit a, a plateau we're, we're not moving forward do you ever feel that oh, yeah, exactly the way I feel because I keep in learning but I always have the impression that I don't learn a lot of vocabulary in my pronunciation keep uh, in the same point um, and sometimes the people don't understand me and then I'm this make me feel a little frustrated uh -huh. about uh -huh. and um, is even now I'm traveling I have to improve my English English in the like uh, real situations and in including this kind of situation that I have um, health problems or this kind of thing that I have a uh, express myself and then I sometimes I I have to make some gestures and um, mm -hmm. I, I don't want to do this. I, w okay. I, like, uh, I want to improve my English and talk better than today, than yeah. in this yeah. moment. So you're speaking specifically of certain situations. Maybe you feel nervous, you feel like you don't know what to say, you don't have the right words. Yeah. and. Uh, for example, I think I'm not fast enough to, and there's some kind of situations that I have to be more um, energical. I, I mean, a like energetic, I, energetic, yeah, energetic, yeah. and uh, to people understand me quickly. And um, sometimes I give up, and sometimes I feel okay. frustrated. And Can you think of a situation that happened to you recently, or or? a moment where you felt like you didn't know what to say a specific situation maybe you were at the doctors maybe you're at the grocery store do you remember uh yeah there there's two situations one uh and i was in montenegro uh, my dog's friends bite uh old uh, old guy or a, a missus i don't know how to say but old man and then I want to excuse me and help him okay. <laughs> and then I couldn't because I, I don't find the words and there was yeah. a embarrassed situation. So you felt embarrassed because you couldn't find the, the right words? Yeah, I mean, okay. and even like uh, what is more polite and what this kind of words I should uh, use in this yes. kind of situation. Yes. Now, can you think of a situation that might happen to you often, like something regular, like a daily situation? where you feel nervous, you feel like you don't have the words? I'm um, generally when I have to ask some information and basically when I have um, um, in the bus station or this kind of place mm -hmm. and I should I have uh, about the place and where I should uh, stop even I don't have a vocabulary to explain <laughs> to you what I 
should to know and then this happened yes. a lot. So asking for directions, for example? Yeah, this too. You feel nervous? Yeah, I feel okay. nervous. I think that I don't know the right words to use. Okay, so asking for directions, maybe you're in a new city, you're in a new place, you, you don't know what to say. <laughs> you feel nervous and you feel like this is stopping you from expressing yourself. Maybe you feel embarrassed too, even. Yeah, it, sometimes this could make me, this could have a, like a bad results, like a, I lost the place and I lost the time and this kind of thing. Yeah, so this can obviously affect your life negatively, <laughs> <laughs> you're, especially if you're traveling a lot. You need to know when's my train leaving, when's my flight leaving, exactly. how do I get to the airport, for example. Yeah. Now, you've been traveling through Europe for the last... Eight, nine months. Yep. Eight, nine months. Okay. And that's a long time. <laughs> uh, and has there been a situation where you've maybe missed your flight, missed your train because of your English? Or a bad situation that something uh, that happened, something bad happened because of, of your level? Mm, almost because I was in, in Bucharest and then I don't find my wagon is the right y word. The carriage, the, <laughs> the carriage, carriage, yes. And then I have to walk all this part and then I just so tired with a lot of uh, baggage. Yes. <laughs> so you had a lot of luggage. luggage. You, you almost missed your train, basically. Yeah, and then I can find my seat and the people try to help me, but sometimes like um, I keep without to <laughs> find <laughs> until so I just say, okay, I will start to cry and then I keep walking. Yeah, yeah. So when we talk about becoming fluent, we don't need to learn everything. We don't need to memorize the dictionary. We need to focus on the language that actually matters. That's called situational English. Maybe that's the English you use at the grocery store. Maybe that's the language you use at the doctors. Maybe at a concert. Maybe you're doing your daily routine. Right, English that you're using every day. That's what matters. That's, that's the important thing. You don't need to memorize the dictionary. You don't need to spend thousands of hours studying useless verbs or useless conjugations, useless words, you need to focus on what's directly relevant to your life. So especially since you're traveling so much, it's super, super important to focus on travel vocabulary, transportation vocabulary, asking for directions, asking for making requests, maybe at the hotel, maybe at the restaurant. So we're going to focus on that. That's something that we need to work on. We'll work on that today. We'll work on that tomorrow. Uh, and the goal is to make you more confident, more comfortable, especially when you travel. Because will you be traveling in Europe uh, more or are you, almost, are you almost done? No, I will keep traveling. Okay. So the goal is to make you more confident when you travel throughout the next weeks, next months, improve your English, but specifically the, the language that is relevant to your situation. So that's what we'll work on today. That's what we'll work on tomorrow as well. Attila, what do you think is your main problem in English? If you had to self-diagnose, what would it be? Yes, definitely I'm nervous. So, <laughs> yeah, so in many situations because I'm afraid uh, uh, I can't uh, um, say uh, correctly the word yeah. Or, or, or maybe I'm looking for a word and I don't find in my mind mm -hmm. uh, uh, because I know I known before but uh, I forget so for this reason I think that is a reason because I'm very excited mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. so uh, so in this situation I can forget many uh, words but I known before uh, Okay, so you forget vocabulary even though you already know it. Yes, exactly. Mm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. But uh, sometimes, uh, yeah. 
Yes, yeah, so my personality, uh, um, yes, mm -hmm. uh, very sensitive. I think that is a reason. <laughs> Maybe uh, uh, I, sometimes I'm uh, very nervous, and that not only in the English in other situations. Mm -hmm. Yes, if I talk with someone, or maybe I don't know. Yeah. Yes, uh, I always want to. Uh, maybe that is my problem because I always want to do my best. Mm -hmm. uh, always. So if, you're a perfectionist. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's a problem. So sometimes, uh, for example, if yeah. I organize a, a party, so I always want to uh, organize uh, the best party. But uh, after, I'm always thinking, what was the wrong in this party? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're always criticizing yourself. And I assume that also happens with English. You think after a conversation, what did I say wrong? For example, you're always second guessing yourself. Is that the case? Uh, who? It's uh, I don't know because uh, um, yeah, <laughs> I, I feel embraced. <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. In, uh, and um, and after I try to find somewhere yeah. in the dictionary mm -hmm. uh, what was the wrong. Uh, uh, but uh, I'm afraid I will forget again. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And can you think of a recent situation in your life where you maybe forgot vocabulary, like a specific moment, specific situation? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. You are right. In a specific uh, moment. Moment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. I can forget uh, when I want to know always everything, and after I forget. <laughs> So do you, do you remember a moment where you felt nervous? Do you remember what you were talking about? Maybe you were in the city, you had to ask somebody? Yes, maybe, but uh, I, told, uh, uh, I told you so I, I can help uh, um, my, with my American friend to teach English. Sometimes uh, um, uh, I want to explain something mm -hmm. in English mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, Always, I'm looking for the uh, correct word. Uh, how can I explain mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. that word meaning? So this is a little bit difficult for me. <laughs> okay. And what about like going to a restaurant? Going to? Yes. Have you traveled to an English-speaking country or another country yes, and I had to been. order yes. at a restaurant, book a hotel? Do you feel nervous when you do this? Uh, this is very interesting. Uh, then no, no, then okay. no, okay. because uh, I can concentrate uh, mm. uh, um, um, the things where I am. Yeah. So I don't concentrate. So I think that is a problem because I always concentrate. Uh, so I'm looking for uh, always my mistakes in myself. If I if I'm outside from my mind, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, um, it's nothing happening, okay. so I can uh, I can speak very well in English. Now I noticed that Angelica and Attila were having some problems with pronunciation, so I wanted to give them my top strategies to improve their accent and pronunciation. The key to improving your pronunciation is to really focus on where your muscles are, in your mouth, where your tongue is, where your lips are, where your muscles are, because obviously the Muscles we use, the way the, the mouth is shaped, affects the sounds that come out of our, our mouths. Uh, for example, in Portuguese, you have different sounds. I can give the example of Russian. Some languages like Russian, they don't open their mouth that much when they speak. They close it a bit. Uh, in English, we tend to really open the mouth. We're more animated when we speak. So if you watch Americans, if you watch Canadians, uh, and you focus on the way they're actually speaking, you'll notice that their, their mouth is open. They're moving a lot. They're very animated. They're smiling a lot. And that affects the accent as well. So let's say you're listening to a native speaker. Maybe you're watching a movie. You need to also focus on the position of their mouth because that affects the sounds that will, will come out. So you mentioned phonetics, um, the word bench. Yeah, I, Give it a I try, bench. 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 Yes, so bench. Uh, bench. Where, how, how is our mouth formed with that CH? Ch, ch. It's like, um, I ha bench. So just the, the ch sound. Bench. Yeah, 
Ho hold it. Ch okay, bench. Ch ch like this, okay? So you <laughs> can see. Uh, ch bench. Perfect. Bench. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Another example, the M sound, the N sound. M and N. What's the difference between M and N? M. Mm. M. M. Mm. Close the mouth. Mm. Mm. Perfect. N. N. Yes. So the mouth is open. N. N. Exactly. Exactly. So you can see that's the that's the big difference. Mm. Close mouth. Mm. Open mouth. N. Once more. N. Yes. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So I'll give you the same advice I gave Angelica. When you watch native speakers, when you listen to native speakers, maybe it's movies, maybe it's in real life, you need to focus on how they're forming the sounds with their mouth. Are their lips closed? Are they opening their mouth wide? Um, you can't see where the tongue is. Obviously the tongue's in the mouth, but that affects the, the sounds too. So if you want to improve your accent, if you want to improve your pronunciation, you need to focus a lot on the position of your mouth, the muscles as well. Why do you feel nervous when you speak? Do you have any idea? I think like our, our brain is like over, mm -hmm. over, overwhelming. Is overwhelmed, yeah, overwhelmed. Okay, why do you think? Uh, why I feel nervous? Or just generally, why do people <coughs> feel nervous when they speak? Uh, because uh, they're afraid. Uh, um, they uh, mistake. Uh, they they're scared they'll make mistakes. Say, yeah, yeah. For this reason, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I I feel nervous for this reason. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, maybe if I say something wrong uh, after, mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I I don't feel comfortable. Uh, and uh, yeah, and they will disappoint in me. And maybe, mm -hmm. for example, I want to to uh, tell for them uh, something a good thing or explain uh, in English. Mm -hmm. And uh, and and I talked. Uh, I uh, said uh, uh, a wrong um, uh, explanation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the reason you feel nervous when you speak is because at some level you care what other people think and you care about their opinion you care about what they think of you and when you care about what somebody thinks of you you give them power over you you give them power to affect the way you feel to make you nervous and most of the time i won't say always but most of the time their opinion shouldn't matter why does it matter what a stranger thinks? Why does it matter if a stranger doesn't like your accent? Mm -hmm. Why? It doesn't. It doesn't affect your life. Well, first of all, I want you to ask yourself, if somebody's learning Portuguese, if they're learning your language, and they speak with an accent, they make mistakes, are you judging them? Never. No. I think they, they, I'm proud of them, have a good job to mm -hmm. try to speak my mm -hmm. language. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. If someone's speaking Hungarian and they make mistakes, are you judging them? No, never. <laughs> never. Yes, uh, I am always uh, try to help them. So, no, mm -hmm. <coughs> if I can hear something, uh, because uh, you know I have an uh, English class, uh, I can hear something wrong from them. So, uh, I I, uh, I really like to help them. So, mm -hmm. um, I really like to improve. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Them. And it's exactly the same with English speakers. Most people, 99% of people, are not judging you when you speak. They don't care if you use the past perfect when you should have used the present perfect. They don't care if you forget a phrasal verb. They, do, they don't care about that. The purpose of language is communication. So if you can express your idea, if you can express what you want to say, at the end of the day, that's what matters. And Again, when you let people influence your, your feelings, you let them take over your feelings, you're giving them this power over you that at the end of the day, they don't deserve. They don't need that. There's no, why would you care what they think, mm -hmm. right? Because that's what it comes down to. 
detaching yourself from what other people think of you i know so i can say something uh, uh, very good uh, advice believe in yourself yes yes that is very important believe in yourself believe in absolutely yourself. it's so important to believe in yourself believe in the fact that you can and you will become fluent if you put in the effort if you're motivated if you do the work and you don't lose sight of your end goal some days it will be easy some days it will be difficult it's like the stock market you'll track a stock some days it will go down some days it will go up but the important thing is the overall trend the big picture is in the right direction now that i had diagnosed their problems it was time to invite them back to my apartment and give them the solution but first i had to introduce them to the polyglot method which is my personal system of learning english which can help you improve your vocabulary and remember new words it's not enough just to learn the rules you need to actually practice it's not enough just to learn vocabulary on its own you you need to actually implement it in conversation speaking practice is the single most important thing when learning a language now as i said theory plus practice equals understanding so what we're going to do today is we're going to learn some very very relevant vocabulary for angelica and for attila and i'm going to introduce to them the polyglot system now the polyglot system is a collection of strategies it's a collection of techniques you can use to memorize new vocabulary and of course grammar as well so we're going to talk about the polyglot system then we're going to come up with some practical phrases practical vocabulary that you can start using you can start using the techniques in the polyglot system tonight uh, and memorize this vocabulary so tomorrow when we have an opportunity <laughs> to we're going to oh, yeah. implement this in in your speaking because speaking practice is so important this is a very good ex uh, challenge for us <laughs> yes um for this reason because i told you so i learned the uh, vocabulary vocabularies mm -hmm. uh, but i couldn't uh, practice with anyone mm -hmm. that was a problem always Yes, so you always need to practice the vocabulary you learn. So the plan was to introduce them to the strategies in the polyglot system and teach them some new vocabulary so later that night and tomorrow they could use those strategies and apply it to the vocabulary to help them memorize. I was confident that this was really going to help them, but I also wanted to know what they thought of my plan. Angelica, what do you think of this? I think it would be amazing because for me one small challenge is like a, to have a quick reward or fast responses yes. when I'm talking yes. and so maybe this exercise will make me feel more confident in, in um, I think I will have to have a, a quick a fast response absolutely absolutely so if you want to speak more quickly if you want to speak without thinking of the words you need to be from more familiar with them you need to memorize them and the strategies in the polyglot method will help you will help you speak more quickly will help you feel less nervous and feel more confident so let's look at the strategies in the polyglot method that's going to be the best way to start so first of all what is the polyglot system the polyglot system is a set of memorization techniques we've collected we've developed and we've organized for you now these are the most effective ways to learn and memorize new vocabulary so this is the key principle right understanding anything in life is a combination of theory and practice we need to learn the rules we need to learn the theory and then we need to implement it let's talk about topic based learning the most important way to learn new vocabulary is to divide it into topics to organize it based on context for example you learn a bunch of new vocabulary about sports about music about art 
And in the case of Attila, in the case of Angelica, we're going to learn new vocabulary based on their problems, okay? So in your case, what do you have the most difficulty talking about? You mentioned you want to become a party organizer. If you want to organize parties yes. in English, in English, you obviously need to know English vocabulary yes, for yes, parties. Yes. Uh, okay, well, uh, sometimes if I organize parties, uh, because I have uh, not only the uh, native, uh, nat native speaking uh, people there, so I already invited uh, uh, from other countries people. So I like to uh, translate uh, 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 for everyone uh, to understand everything um, uh, what's happening exactly. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I, I speak, I try to speak English. I try to uh, um, explain or introduce uh, what's happening exactly mm -hmm. there. Um, uh, for this reason, I need to uh, learn or um, yeah, learn some new vocabularies. About organizing parties. About organizing yeah, parties. specifics. So that's related to the specific topic. Yeah. That's important, right? Yeah. You organize your vocabulary based mm -hmm. on topics. Mm -hmm. And Angelica, in your case, you mentioned you've been traveling around Europe for eight, nine months, mm -hmm. and you have problems sometimes with English, with asking for maybe directions, asking for recommendations. You say you feel nervous. Uh, can you tell me a bit more about this? Um, I think the problem is like uh, how to be more quickly when I have to... Uh, explain myself in the kind of situations that I need to be fast because mm -hmm. you talk about the the way that I should take or um, important informations mm -hmm. and this kind of things mm -hmm. and it's like a day by day but at the same time it's like a, this could be emergency too mm -hmm. <laughs> absolutely so you want to be able to think more quickly exactly. and specifically the topic we're talking about is travel so uh, what kinds of things might you ask what would be a situation so asking for directions mm -hmm. asking for recommendations would you feel nervous doing that i think um, informations is more uh, complicated for mm -hmm. me because i sometimes i i don't think that i have this vocabulary in mm -hmm. the um or if I want to know how the things work in the city when I just arrive and, and basic of things and I feel so lost yes, <laughs> in this kind yes. of situation. So guys, Angelica just arrived this morning in Budapest. And what better way to conduct our lesson than to learn some new vocabulary specifically for travel, specifically for asking about information asking for recommendations, asking for directions. So today we're going to learn some new vocabulary about recommendations, asking for information specifically for you. And we're also going to learn some new vocabulary for talking about parties, talking about organizing events. Okay. These are your problems. These are your difficulties. And that's what we're going to focus on. That's what you need the most help with. Uh, when I talk about topic-based learning, you can see you're dividing the topics into, or sorry, you're dividing the vocabulary into topics, right? Sports, travel, restaurants, you have a bunch of different vocabulary. So today, in your case, the topic will be events, parties, mm -hmm. asking for recommendations, asking for information. So we're dividing that into topics which will help you memorize, it will help you remember the vocabulary. Now, I explained in detail all the five strategies of the polyglot method to Angelica and Attila. I'm not going to tell you everything about the polyglot method here in this video, and if you want to learn more about it, you need to join the English at the Ready Club. I'll be opening up registration in the near future on Instagram, so make sure to follow me there at English at the Ready. Now, I also told Angelica and Attila how important it is to come up with their own example sentences when learning. It's really important actually to write them out with a pen and paper instead of maybe using your phone or using the computer because when you write them out 
you're actually physically making a motion with your muscles, with your wrist, mm -hmm. and this helps your brain make that connection. So you're forming new pathways in your brain. So you need to write physically with a pen and paper these example sentences. Tonight, I'm going to get you to use this strategy. I'm also going to get you to use this strategy as well um, to help you memorize the vocabulary that we learn. For homework, I'm going to get Attila and Angelica to watch an amazing recording in the English at the Ready Club, which is the video of the polyglot system. So we need to focus on relevant phrases, relevant vocabulary, which is why Attila and Angelica and me, we've come up with a list of recommendations or a list of phrases you can use to ask for recommendations. Now, Angelica, you're going to memorize this later for homework, but I'd like to hear your pronunciation for all of these. Can you start with the first one? Sure. Uh, so, excuse me, what is the fastest way to get to Elizabeth Bridge? Perfect. Can you repeat after me? Excuse me. What's the fastest way to get to Elizabeth Bridge? Excuse me, what is the fast way to get to Elizabeth Bridge? The fastest. The fastest. Perfect. The fastest way to get... The fastest way to get to Elizabeth Bridge? Perfect. Can you say bridge? Bridge. Bridge. So it goes down. Bridge. Thank you. Uh, bridge. The whole sentence? Okay. Excuse me, what is the fastest way to get to Elizabeth Bridge? Perfect, okay. After we created these five phrases for Angelica, I came up with a list of five words for Attila that were related to parties and events. Since Attila loves organizing parties and needs this kind of vocabulary, this exercise is going to be incredibly useful for him. His homework is going to be to memorize these words and use them tomorrow in conversation. Attila, what did you think of the diagnosis? What do you think of the polyglot method? Are you nervous? Are you confident? Do you think this is going to work? Yeah, I'm uh, nervous a little bit, but uh, I'm, um, very, I'm really very curious uh, how is working this uh, polygram um, um, program. Uh, so I really want to um, learn new things. I hope uh, this will be help for me in the future in my English. Amazing. And have you done anything like this before? Is it new to you? Uh, this is really very new for me. So I heard about uh, recently from you. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so I'm really very curious. I'm, I can wait it. Uh, how can I uh, um, practice or learn uh, English with this uh, program? Amazing. And Angelica, can you share your thoughts? Have you, or first of all, are you nervous about tomorrow? Do you think you're going to be able to memorize these phrases? Or do you think it's going to work? Do you think it's not going to work? I think it's going to work. I mean, I'm, I'm happy because I find a way to, um, I think you, you recognize well uh, my problems. And then by this, the questions about to be quick in my communication. So um, I'm excited about, I think I, I have to practice this tonight and about the, the method. Um, there's a lot of things that I see that, is, um, that I heard before as a professor, uh, as a teacher. So I'm happy to see this. Uh, there's a lot of things that I definitely gonna work because you use um, um, scientific uh, tools. I don't know if tools is a good word. Scientific tools, strategies, tools, methods. Strategy. So I think this is gonna work because when uh, there's someone guide us is easier even for me because I, I work with language but it's not that easy when I have to do this with by myself. So I'm I'm glad to, to see this method and to to know better about this. Exactly, and it's really, really difficult to improve if you're just doing everything by yourself, right? It really helps to have somebody mentoring you, somebody guiding you, somebody holding your hand, because learning English or learning any language is a journey. Mm -hmm. 
It's not something that happens overnight. It takes time, it takes weeks, months. And if you have an expert, you have somebody who's there to support you, to mentor you, it's going to make it a thousand times more enjoyable and easier too. Guys, it's the end of the day here. I'm absolutely exhausted and I've given Angelica and Attila their homework. They're gonna go home tonight, apply what they learned today in our training and tomorrow they need to be prepared to complete some very difficult tasks. So let's see what happens tomorrow. Make sure to stay tuned for part two of our reality show and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye for now.